Think of how your life, and indeed mine, has changed as a result of the pandemic, particularly in relation to how we use technology. Whether it's working from home, the sudden much greater use of telecommunications, it all happened so fast. We were rocketed into the next dimension, if you will. The chief executive of Spain's largest telecoms group, Telefonica, says what happened is we lost our fear of digitalization during the pandemic. We became so used to using digital equipment. We had to go completely online and years of progress were done in a matter of weeks. Our various lives are testament to the truth of those statements. Telefonica is one of the world's leading companies. It's headquartered here in Madrid. It has major subsidiaries in Germany, in the United Kingdom, and in Brazil. And here in Spain, it, of course, has Movistar, along with various platforms, along O2 and Vivo. I visited the campus just outside Madrid for an exclusive interview with the chief executive. He was quite clear. If you think about it, for a telecom company, the pandemic put them into uncharted territory. Well, first, nobody was prepared for that. Totally unexpected in none of our business plan of scenarios. We never planned the network to face a pandemic. Nobody. So the network was not uh, designed to have 100% of the population working from home, being educated from home, uh, having entertainment from home. So it was, you know, total uncharted territory. So it was a, a, a stress test for the network and it performed very well. What have you learned as a company from the way people are using technology? It has been an amazing experiment. Every week of the pandemic has been like a year in digitalization. In five weeks, we have been seeing things that we were projecting for five years because we have lost fear of digitalization. When you have all the population that is totally confined, they lose fear of getting totally online for working, for education, for all purpose. Uh, for companies, if they want to keep working, they need to go into the cloud. So things that were projected to happen in three to five years happen in five weeks. While its customers were hunkered down, Telefonica had to focus on what comes next. It has an entire lab at its headquarters dedicated to the biggest innovation yet, 5G. I'm old enough to remember 3G was going to do marvels and the, 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 board, the spectrum that was sold. 4G was going to revolutionize, LTE was the holy grail, and 5G is nirvana. What is it? Well, 5G is more than an evolution. It's really a revolution in terms of, uh, uh, of mobile network because it's not just much more speed of access or, or bandwidth. It's mostly the elimination of latency. Uh, therefore, it opens the role, opens the door for tactile internet, things that need to happen in, in simultaneously. Right. But I've told you, retailing is one area, correct? Explain to me, what does 5G enable with this in retail that you couldn't do before? The fact that every single thing is connected and you have enough one bandwidth to do that in real time. So it's density of population of things connected per square meter, so to say, a speed of access to the information generated by these things, jointly with people, and real-time processing of that information. The 5G lab is vast, covering everything from live video to the Internet of Things. The only problem is many of its employees are still WFH, working from home. Uh, Wall Street wants everyone back in the office. The tech companies say, work at home, you're going for a hybrid. What does that mean in reality? Well, flexibility has proven to be very useful, so to say. What we have decided is that we are going to combine both models. You are going to give flexibility to your workforce. That means that uh, two days out of five, you can decide to stay at home if you want to. But then you need to collaborate with your uh, boss at your department and choose which those two days are going to be. But we are going to give much more flexibility. Because but, the, but you bought, you, look at it, we're here at your campus, beautiful, you don't need all of this as much. Well, the answer is yes, and why is that? Because you cannot go fully remote, I mean there are things that are intangibles, like the culture of the company, the way of doing things, this is a 97 year old company, there are ways of doing things, they are intangibles. 
the key thing here is to measure the amount of productivity you gain through remote work, the amount of uh, value that you can create, and what you might be losing in terms of having those two indicators, those two KPIs, what is the productivity impact of flexibility, and at the same time, what are you losing in terms of quality of attending your customers, the way you do things? That's the kind of things that we need to balance. What is your strategy? You've got, you've got Spain, Germany, the UK and Brazil, but you have this hodgepodge of other investments in Latin America and Central Latin America. What are you doing with them all? In November 2019, we decided to execute five pillars of action. The first one is to concentrate on the four largest markets for us, which are Spain, Germany, the UK and Brazil. The second thing we decided is to optimize our capital allocation to the reminder of Latin America, to reduce our exposure to those markets in terms of the capital exposure. The third thing we decided to do is to create Telefonica Tech. Telefonica Tech is value added services in the B2B business. The fourth thing was to uh, do a huge effort on Telefonica infrastructure. And the fifth thing is to do a new operating model, a much more efficient, digitized new operating model. When we designed that, we never thought that four months after we'll have a pandemic. We have been able to execute these five pillars in the middle of the pandemic. Streaming. Now, of course, CNN is owned by uh, Warner Media, Warner Media, part of AT&T, which bought and spent a lot of money in arguably not a successful merger. You have Telefonica, you have Movistar, which is a platform and a producer. Why are you producing content? Because I can differentiate my offer through local content. There are two kinds of contents that my customers love, international content and local content. There is no way I can compete in international content because the cost of producing an episode of Game of Thrones or The Crown or uh, you know, House of Cards is so expensive that I don't have enough scale to compete on that way. But I can compete on the local content side because the cost of producing an episode is much lower, it's much smaller, and at the same time I have access to all the talent and the culture and part of that one. So as far as I'm able to combine and integrate the international content and differentiate my offer through local content, I'm attractive and more attractive than my peers. There we have the CEO of Telefon.